explain. Yeah, becoming absolutely ice, you mm. know. Carla's mother flattened her breasts, clothes. Well, it's that whole thing again of that sexual um, and Carla, rivalry. And Carla, this little rebellious, shows up without a bra. Without any underwear. Yeah, no panties as well. Well, I was like, going to leave that out. Going of braless it. wasn't enough. It's going to take a one step further. Like, but, no underwear. But, uh... You can feel your mother looking at the out. Uh, you can Carla can feel her mother looking at the outline of her breasts. Yeah, yeah. So this is what you meant about stripping a, a, a child of, of, of sexuality or. Of, oh yeah, I mean her whole battle in this book is um, a fight for her sexuality, and it and it even translates to every man she makes love with in this book, and there are a number of them. Um, <laughs> it was the summer I stopped wearing underwear. I didn't just stop wearing a bra. Everyone was doing that. I stopped wearing all underwear. Taking immense pleasure, this is Carla, taking immense pleasure in the look of horror that crossed my mother's face. It was a battle, this, you know. This, that's yeah. the, that's only the other finger. Right. This is what you're doing to your, this is what Carla's doing yeah, to her mother. Yeah, yeah. I would pass her in the house, the outline of my breasts visible through th uh, thick cotton tops or t-shirts. I also, uh, I'm sorry, it would be thin cotton tops. I also refused to shave under my arms, prom prompting her to banish me to my room if guests were expected. <laughs> Obviously, you've had a very tense relationship with your mother growing up. Um, I just wanted to know what your relationship is like with her now, at the present time, you know, now that you have grown up, and sometimes, you know, it's different as, as an adult compared to a child. Um, I, I don't have much of a relationship uh, with my family at the moment. I don't know, you know, what will happen in the future, but again, I think that's something that I've decided needs to be written about, you know, um, not, not fictionally next time, you know, because, uh, because the, uh, can I just say one thing well, about the other, the caller, um, this is a, it's a big subject, you know, dysfunctional families are a big subject, you know, and I'll bet that if you polled this audience, maybe three people would have had nurturing, close, yeah. wonderful well, childhoods, and one of them is Phil. Well, um, uh, you're lucky, but uh, you're, you my need, parents, you know? thank you, I thank you. But uh, there's a billion kinds of dysfunction. That's true. And, but you uh, know what the one common factor is in all of them? Is secrecy. Whether it's alcoholism or molestation or Somebody incest, hiding or, something. It's always secrecy, no matter, what, no matter what the dysfunction is. And I think that the more people who are willing to not keep secrets anymore and just tell the truth, the m that enables other people to not feel alone, to not feel like... I have to keep this secret. I can't talk about this, you know. You can talk about it. I mean, that's why John Bradshaw's latest book has been on the bestseller list for 40 weeks. Because a lot of us are dealing with this stuff, you know. The American people look up to your mother and father, whether you like that or not. I personally think you're a snot-nosed kid who... Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on, just a minute. Right. 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 Aren't you a brave big boy yeah. to call names like to call names to a 110 pound female? Why Come do you think? Why? I think she's Go to your right. room yeah. with this kind of stuff. Uh, yes. You feel better now? Wait. Can I just ask? Can I just ask you a question? Sure. Can I just can. ask you a question? Wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, okay. What was this question? I don't mind. I just think that the first cardinal rule is, you know, to stick up for mom and dad, regardless of what your problems are. You're going to profit by the book and everything. And I understand your motive behind it, you know, and I, I really don't mean to insult you or anything. But the only thing that I'm really trying to say is that... Snot nose? What was that? I mean, I, I'm a lot more... What would be an insult? That, would, that wouldn't be... For me, that would be nothing, believe me. So you use snot nose routinely, then, but, in your... But in a way, she is, because she broke the first cardinal rule. You stand behind mom and dad. Family comes first. A little respect. That's the American way. You're going to do nothing but profit by your book. And that's all you care about is the bottom line, the dollar. Well, so if I'm a writer and I have certain stories that are inherent in my life and in my experience and stories that I'm interested in, um, I should, what, not write and go work at McDonald's? Um, right. what, write a yeah, book on If you want a hobby, start a stamp collection, you know, lay off mom and dad, you know, lay off mom and dad. So I should just keep all the secrets and not tell the truth, right? Yeah, that's that's better? Stand behind mom and dad. Stand behind mom and dad and keep secrets. Right. 
Yes, basically. I was doing my book tour for my second novel, and um, these two women wanted telephone interviews about the novel and did telephone interviews, and there was nothing... Um, um, you know, there was nothing in them that, that seemed odd to me. They didn't ask me about my mother. They asked me about uh, my book, you know, right. or my political so, differences. And stuff. So you are... And then they, turn, then they turn the interviews over to Kitty, sorry. Okay, but I mean, they didn't ask you anything directly about your own life uh, and your relationship with your mother? No, so that whatever they got from those interviews, they probably could have gotten from anything. I see. Do you know? So, you, so, so the citing you as a reference in Kitty Kelly's book would leave the viewer or the reader to believe that somehow... Patty was the one child who cooperated with uh, Miss Kelly, and you didn't. Well, no, that's true. I didn't. I didn't. I, she wrote me on two separate occasions and asked if she could interview me, and I wrote her back and um, declined. And I, I told her that, you know, as a writer, I, I have stuff that is mine, and I'm very, you know, possessive about that, and, and um, mm -hmm. that was really my reason. I mean, this thing is, just flew out of the story. Yeah, well, I told you, you know, my reason, even though my friend over there doesn't agree with it, but, um... That, uh... I still hold it. That, that Reagan, that the Reagan family was the familial metaphor for the country during the 80s. I think so. I mean, I, I do. And, I mean, look at the legacy Pretending of it. At, things that weren't we're, real. Right. Look at what we're dealing with now, you know? I mean... Grenada, we gave away thousands of medals in the invasion of Grenada. We trashed Nicaragua. We, you know, there was enormous environmental neglect. We're having. To, we didn't have eight years to lose in the environment. This planet's dying. You know, it's still dying. We didn't have eight years to lose, yeah. and we lost it. You know, yeah. um, and economically, I, I mean, whoever has children out here, your children are going to be paying yeah. for. Yeah. I may I say this, uh, Patty? I'm impressed. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about Carla. The the I'm. A House of Secrets is a novel, a fictional novel by Patty Davis about a dysfunctional family in which, which is written through the eyes of Carla who develops a steely kind of glass hardness yeah. to hurt. This dude stands up and calls you a snot nose and you didn't even blink. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, you, it's not, you don't, you aren't ever going to show anybody your pain. Yeah. Well, some people. <laughs> and we'll be back in just a I'm moment. meeting him for a drink after the show. Right. I could make a very good case for um, probably this man's philosophy of if you are famous and if you're well known that, that you shouldn't, you know, open up your lives, you shouldn't be truthful, you shouldn't sort of bear everything. I could argue that case admirably, maybe even brilliantly, but I think that people are put in situations in their lives for reasons, and the fact is that the Reagan family was put on this enormous stage under this enormously bright light, and I can't believe that the reason for that is to keep secrets, you know? I, so I'm trying to operate from... <laughs> You're trying to operate from... I'm trying from to what? operate from a perspective of, of looking for a reason for this situation that I was born into and do something constructive yeah. with it. Just